to go out and start stalking, killing all the whites and everything like that. And he calls them crackers, which, by the way, if you were to say the reverse negative word about a black person, you'd be hung and basically killed. But he, of course, can say, oh, yeah, pop a cracker. I mean, this is totally insane. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the phone lines. And we want to open up the phone lines right now only to callers to get the reaction on this, on what Farrakhan is saying, what Alex is saying, the overall attack on humanity from both sides of the spectrum. Get your take on that. And we're going to kind of blitz through those calls and get everyone's take and develop on that subject a little bit more. First, I want to cover some more news that's breaking right now on InfoWars. Dot com. These are the featured stories, breaking headline news on Infowars.com. First, we have federal judge eager to challenge NSA bulk snooping again. So hopefully we might actually have some le leverage on that. A federal judge who called NSA surveillance practices almost Orwellian says that he found a way to re revive a constitutional challenge to the controversial program after a federal court lifted his 2013 injunction blocking the program. Here's an interesting one. Three injured in machete attack at University of Arkansas, officials say. Not a gun, a machete. A machete-wielding man injured two people and himself Thursday in a wooded area of the Un University of Arkansas campus. Spokesperson Z. Voorhees said the attack happened at 7.15 p.m. And obviously someone went in with a machete and started attacking people because machete control is now what we need. We need to ban machetes. New York's town's daily laborer law ruled unconstitutional. Federal drug has, judge has struck down as unconstitutional a suburban New York town's law banning day laborers from soliciting for work on public sidewalks. Just a bunch of stuff at Infowars.com. A massive stack was brought into me, so I was just going through that. So what I would like to do is I would like to go to a couple callers before the break, and then we're going to come back with more news, more videos, your take on the Farrakhan issue, and some other subjects as well. But it looks like we already have Chuck from Oklahoma who wants to talk about the Farrakhan and the race war. Chuck, what's on your mind? Well, you know, I wanted to really just kind of see what y'all believe that this is deriving from. You know, it does. It, you know, it seems like a lot of this has started towards, you know, the end, you know, globally. And with Obama, you know, being put into office, you know, I don't know. Is that a pretense to this, you know, help starting this race war? You know, that's an interesting I mean, question because I think what, like, black people that are normal and don't want to kill all white people think is, you know, at some point, Obama being black and being a president is a move forward for the black community, you know, the first black president. And then on the flip side, there is that radically insane group that thinks great obama's black now we need to get rid of all the white people white people are terrible everyone needs to be black in office so you could say obama be you know becoming president fueled this but i'd really say that most most people most black people white people aren't mentally insane and they understand that it's a great leap forward for a black president but that obama is terrible and has nothing to do with his skin color right so i would say that it may have contributed does that make sense chuck that makes sense, sir. And this is my last question, uh, and I appreciate it very much. And you can actually take this off air, answer this off air, is, uh, you know, with the uh, the uh, the Border Patrol thing happening over in, uh, in Europe, I believe, or, and, uh, yeah, over there, um, you know, they've got a lot of people coming in, and I hear they're even putting people into uh, camps right now because uh, they can't control how many people are coming across. They're even talking about building a border like, you know, they did for Mexico. Um, have you all got any, uh, any more info as far as, uh, you know, them putting the pupils into the camps and what kind of treatment's being done and what's going on on that stuff? Well, as usual, it's up to the United States people and the taxpayers to make sure that all the illegal immigrants that come over must be housed and taken care of. Forget the law. I mean, Hillary Clinton, we're going to play a video actually coming up, talks about how it's like a holocaust if we were to get rid of illegal immigrants. And also, I'm going to talk about how, new, new story from Washington Post, the Arab world's wealthiest nations are doing nothing to help Syria's refugees and letting us take care of it. Stay tuned. More coming up on The Alex Jones Show. Totalitarianism comes in many different flavors throughout history. It can come from the right wing, the left wing. It can come from religious cults. It can come from a foreign invading army. And in the modern 21st century, it's basically coming from political correctness, masquerading as the Renaissance, masquerading as liberalism. It seeks to shut down free speech. And the controlled globalist left has willing accomplices 
in the Republican Party and other conservative and libertarian organizations and groups throughout the world. The robber barons that control this planet are not free market. They are monopoly men who seek to have systems free of competition, controlled by offshore combines above the law. The main mission of Infowars.com and my 20 years on air is to shatter the left-right paradigm and to get the public to become aware of what's really governing and controlling society on a mass scale. Bottom line, we have reached that legendary, colossal moment in history where the next thousand years of human development, our very destiny is being decided. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. The first money bomb I've done in three years because we only do these if they're critical to be able to build up our infrastructure. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on UHF, VHF, and cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. Starting September 16th, through the 17th, we're going to broadcast live from 11 a.m. on the 16th through 2 p.m. on the 17th for 27 hours with an amazing lineup of guests, investigative journalists, documentary films, and more. We are seeking to raise a million dollars so that we can reach 400 million extra people potentially in the next year. Because if you do the math, and if you look at the numbers that we're already getting from affiliates and from the internet and from YouTube and from Facebook and all the platforms, we are reaching 20 million people a week. If you put all that together over a year, that's upwards of 200 million different individuals around the world is how the algorithm metrics come out. So I simply want to double that in the next 12 months after launching this money bomb. Just the satellites, the closed captioning under federal law and other regulations will cost us right at $39,000 a month, which if you add it together is over $400,000 a year alone. When you talk about cameras, crew, studio, million dollars is only a portion of what we need to do this, but it's an important part to ensure with the collapsing economy and the hard times we're going into that we have the funds it takes to keep this beacon of truth exposing globalism and dehumanization operating so join us this september 16th and 17th for what i believe will be the final money bomb that infowars ever runs as we prepare to launch to the next and final level of global awakening because as mahatma gandhi famously said First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. We are in that process of being massively attacked. And in the face, we're charging up, getting ready, and going in. Go to Infowars.com forward slash money bomb for all the information. And in closing, I want to say this to all of you patriots out there across the globe that have spread the word about our operation and that have supported us. History is happening right now. The destiny of humanity is being decided right now. And InfoWars, which you, the viewers and listeners and activists, stand at the heart of, is the engine that has made all this possible. You're not standing behind the InfoWar. You are standing at the center of it. You are right beside us in this fight. And I guarantee you, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Sam Adams would be incredibly proud of what you've done in defense of human freedom, in defense of true liberty. So from myself, Alex Jones, and the entire InfoWars crew, we salute you. Join us this September 16th and 17th for the 27-hour Money Bomb in defense of human liberty. You're dialed in to the watch post against tyranny, corruption, and everything in between. This is the Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi sitting in today for Alex Jones. We're taking your calls, and we're going to get into a video in the next segment of Hillary Clinton comparing getting rid of illegal immigrants to a holocaust. 
And I also have some more immigration news about how countries are making America and other nations foot the bill for all illegal immigrants. Now, first and foremost, we have a video that I want to play here. We are going to be taking calls on a number of different subjects. We have Mike in Wyoming, Doug in Minnesota, Stephen in Florida, Brandon in Texas. We're going to talk about that. But first, we have an interesting report from John Bound called the Nazi British Crown. Let's see what that's about. Their royal highness, indeed. The Sun published a secret 1933 film showing Queen Elizabeth being taught the Nazi salute by her treasonous uncle Edward VIII, the Prince of Wales. He would later be known as King Edward VIII and Emperor of India, but would be quietly removed from the throne less than 12 months later as he remained pro-Nazi, even after the war accelerated. His scandalous marriage to a doubly divorced American woman would be his downfall, as the history books would have you believe. However, the once and future king was pigeonholed to the Bahamas as its governor because his Nazi sympathies became widely known during World War II. Two years before his death, Edward told an interviewer that he never thought Hitler was such a bad chap. An MI5 report featuring a British admiral who had attended Hitler's 1937 Nuremberg rally said that Hitler would soon invade, but there was no reason to worry about it because he would bring the Duke of Windsor, formerly King Edward, over as king. So how far back has the German parasite sat on the English throne? The lineage is long but begins with the Act of Settlement of 1701 when the Parliament of England granted the English throne to Protestant heir Sophia of Hanover. A German lineage of King George's soon followed, as did the American War for Independence. In 1840, Queen Victoria married her first cousin, Prince Albert, the son of the Duke of the Saxe-Coburg-Gotha House in Germany. Up until the First World War, the Saxe-Coburg-Gotha and another German aristocratic name, Wetton, were used. Those names were replaced with Windsor, essentially a cover for a hard line of German aristocrats occupying the British throne. Queen Elizabeth married Prince Philip. Prince Philip is from the German house of Glücksburg. Two of Prince Philip's brothers-in-law fought for the Nazis, and many of his relatives were linked with the Nazi party. In a frank interview, he said they found Hitler's attempts to restore Germany's power and prestige attractive, and admitted they had inhibitions about the Jews. From Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip Sprang, a man so obsessed with his ancestral ties to the bloodthirsty monster, Vlad the Impaler, that he has bought up so much property in Romania, he now owns an entire village. The genealogy shows that I'm descended from Vlad the Impaler, you see. So I do have a bit of a stake in the country. And Prince Andrew, who was accused of child sex charges after now allegedly being part of Jeffrey Epstein's case of pedophilia. And Prince Edward, whose wife Sophie was embroiled in a scandal involving sex tours, drugs, and gay prostitution after she was recorded by a reporter posing as a sheik. And have they stopped? No, they've increased. The royal coverage of the royal carriage. Almost every time I see CNN, it's the Queen of England, gracious leader. Oh, we love you. you. They'll have that British reporter on going, they're probably having pea soup and something proper meal. And again, I'm not an Anglophobe, ladies and gentlemen. I love England. Love a lot of the culture. It's amazing. Led with the Magna Carta and the, and the real Renaissance worldwide. So much has come out of the British Isles. But not the globalist and the Transylvanian royal family perched like giant stinking vultures on the carcass of the UK. So, when German Prince Harry dons a Nazi insignia at a private party, and sheepishly apologizes to the adoring brainwashed public, and films are revealed of Queen Elizabeth giving the Heil Hitler salute. Real Britons know full well they are under occupation. John Bound for Infowars.com. Welcome back, my friends. This is the Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi sitting in for Alex today. We're taking your calls, blitzing through the news. We've got some videos lined up, too. And later on in the segment, we're going to premiere something else. So first and foremost, check out this headline just brought in a few seconds ago. Egyptian billionaire offers to buy an island from Greece or Italy to provide jobs so fleeing migrants can build a new country. A telecoms tycoon is going to pay up to $100 million for the island. He's also offered to provide jobs to build housing, schools, and hospitals. He says, 
The way they are treated now, they are being treated like cattle. More than 2,300 people have died at sea trying to reach Europe this year.